Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I do really appreciate it. So tonight, what I wanted to do, um, I get lots and lots of questions on this. And it seems like no matter how many times I talk about this thing, I, I continue to get questions about it. So what I thought I would do is I would just take a little bit of time and I would talk about um, my favorite um, price pattern entries and the things I look for in charts. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a really, I'm a, I'm a big price action nerd. Um, I study price action. That's the most important thing to me. It's more important um, than anything. Um, as you can see, this is the chart I make most of my decisions from. I try to avoid a lot of indicators. Okay. Now, I know that's unrealistic, and so I have a strategy. It's called the 3-8 trap, and there's a lot of folks in here that have taken that class, the 3-8 trap class, and um, <clears throat> have seen some tremendous benefits from it. Malcolm has been gracious to, to let folks know what it's done for him and other folks <coughs> excuse me, have enjoyed that. So I will show a little bit of that tonight. Apologize for the cough. I will show that a little bit uh, tonight. But more importantly, what I want to talk about is just the simple things in charts that really make a, a big difference. So first, um, let me just pick up a screen that's kind of empty here. So we don't have much of anything on it. And let's just talk about um, talk about price and price patterns and why they mean what they mean and what the difference is between um, you know um, concise, steady price action, um, real volatile price action, things like that, and how it can really affect your trading. Um, let me ask. Let me ask right now. How many folks have over the last you know, couple of months been really challenged in the market because of that wild volatility. And and even almost to the point that, um, you know, you've given back gains, a lot of gains um, in the market, <clears throat> trying to keep up or go at the same pace that you were earlier on. Now, one of the reasons that is the case, guys, is, is we fail to recognize we fail to recognize that the market has changed, and that's really, really important for a trader to do, to notice when things have changed in the market and adapt or back off in your trading. So let me give you an example of that. When when a chart is in an upside trend, oh, sorry, I have a funky mouse here right now. When a chart is in an upside trend, we typically have rather <clears throat> concise or consistent um, price movement. <clears throat> There's that old saying that stocks go up an escalator and when they go down, they take the elevator shaft. So we get more of that slow grindy move up and these pullbacks and that grindy move up and these pullbacks. Sometimes we catch that grindy move up and we consolidate, but it's a lot slower as a general rule in price action. What we have seen here just recently coming up out of a bottom is we were in a downtrend. Prices were moving in a downtrend in this pattern. And then all of a sudden we just went like this. Right? And when we do these kind of things, the amplitude of that move increases the risk of our trades. Because when we move in that big fashion, isn't it true that when that happens, we get that, we get that feeling, that fear of missing out, right? We want to jump in, we want to race, please hurry up and get me to a trade, those kind of things. And that's often when we make that major mistake. We jump into a trade right before the stock pulls back, right before the market pulls back. And, and we kind of intuitively know that we're taking a high risk trade, but we just can't help ourselves when we want to trade. And, and we, get, we get hammered when things like that occur. Well, when I'm looking at charts, 
I'm really only interested in a couple of price patterns. And um, I'll show this really quick. Everybody in, in here has heard this before. I want to see a stock that's moving up. Does a pullback, call it a pullback opportunity. It was actually named by Rick. Um, or a rally and a consolidation. And I call that a pop out of the box. And I'm looking for that contact where we're holding price support, where we're holding trend in a trade. So when I get these big, giant moves in a trade, I am honestly not interested. Uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't impress me. One of the things that occurs all the time in the trading room is when we get a stock that just makes a big, great big move, it gets talked about all day long. It's just, oh my gosh, look at this thing. What do we do? How do we, you know... But they should be saying, there's just too much risk to trade it. Let's look for something else. But we get all caught up. Yeah, like Tesla. That's right. We get all caught up and then we kind of get ourselves laser focused. How many in here would admit that you've sat and watched a trade for so long that you've talked yourself into a position that you really should have never been in? I mean, the reason I bring these things up, guys, is I've made all these mistakes. Made all of these mistakes. And you look back, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, Alan, you look back sometimes on that trade to uh, do an, a little bit of an evaluation and go, what in the heck was I thinking? Right? Because almost from the moment you enter, you get punished. And so... It's one of the things that I really guard myself against. It's what I really guard myself against. I want to see tight, close price action in a trade. So my favorite patterns are just those two, that pullback opportunity where the stock has been trending to the upside. We pull back, we find price support, and then I see a buy signal. Now, I get a lot of questions about what's a buy signal. And for me, a buy signal is nothing more than a confirmation that buyers are responding. Okay, it can be a bullish engulfing, it can be a piercing pattern, it can be, um, you know, a dozen different things. Okay, but I want to see buyers picking up. Okay. And then the next pattern is when we move up and then we just kind of consolidate. Now, oftentimes consolidations will come in to a, a price action chart when we've had that big, big spiking move where we went really fast, okay? There's such a thing as amplitude of a move. When I show people a trend and they ask me about a chart and that chart has done this, Pulled back and shows a buy signal here. What do you think your chances are of catching into this trade that this is going to just continue in this rocket ship type move? Okay. <clears throat> Sound is good, right? Everybody can hear? Is that Brian? Brian, you're, um, thanks for posting that. All right, good. So when you rally up like this and you get that really quick pullback in the chart, what very commonly happens, not every time, okay, what commonly happens is we'll, we'll catch that buy signal in here. We may go a couple of days and then we dribble our way or consolidate our way back to trend before that stock moves up. And I got to tell you guys, um, I have I have caught myself in this pat trap um, so many times, and not only that, caught myself in the trap on a stock that's moved up, and I waited so long to get into the trade, I almost invariably catch it just before it pulls back and I get stopped out. Okay, so there's a couple things that are really really important to me: support, price support. Now let's talk about that for just a second. If a stock is trading up here and it falls through here, if this produces a buy signal right here, is that an entry? 
It is absolutely not an entry. And and it's so easy because you see that big white candle. Isn't it true that a lot of our scans are set up to show us those big white candles? So for me, any time, any time a stock has broken support, and I mean the price action support in the trade, it only becomes viable again when it recovers that support and then proves to hold. See, I've been also trapped in this where we spike above. Okay, we spike above, jump on that trade because I'm afraid I'm going to miss out. And then we pull back and sometimes we don't hold this support, right? We just keep failing. See, we have no proof of support until we prove to hold it and buyers support it there. And this is the resumption of the upside trend. Okay. Now the same thing is going to be true when we're in downtrends. When a stock is in a downtrend, and we I see this, I hear this all the time from folks. We'll do this kind of thing. Shoot down, show buyers here. Oh my gosh, I got to hurry up and buy this. We're trying to pick the bottom. Okay. And one of the things I teach guys is two of the most dangerous places in a chart where the volatility is the highest is when we're trying to pick a bottom and we're trying to pick a top. That's where the price action is the wildest, the, bit, the swings are the biggest, the danger is the highest. Okay? <coughs> well, because I'm looking for buy signal or buyers to step in WT, typically it is um, on a daily chart because I'm mostly a swing trader, but it works it works just as well for intraday trading, okay? The same thing is true. It doesn't matter if this is a daily chart, a weekly chart, a 10 minute chart, a five minute chart, it doesn't matter. For me, there is no possible trade in this move until this stock finds that way to get above that downtrend and prove to hold. And then I have something I can work with. Because I know I'm not the only one here in this room that has done this. See that stock that has been moving down and finally peeks its head up here and I buy it. Right? We've all done it. Right? We're trying to catch that bottom. We're trying to get the perfect entry. And then a couple of days later, we're back down here. Yeah, and it's a, it's a nasty t-shirt, isn't it? <laughs> I, I've got a whole pile of them, a stack of them. Okay, so we want to avoid, we want to avoid taking those high risk trades. And we can do that by just having the discipline to say, no, I need a technically correct pattern. So let me ask you guys, if we've been moving down in a chart, okay, can we have a technically correct pattern here? Is there anything technically correct about that pattern yet? It's correct. There can be no upside trend until at a minimum we make a higher low. Okay. Now what if, what if that higher low, that first higher low comes in, against a downtrend that's been going for months, and every time we pop up there, we fail. Is this a technically correct pattern yet? No, it's a high risk trade, right? We could be buying it right at the point of failure. And don't you guys see this pattern a lot? And people call this the double bottom. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up and jump in and buy that. I have been trapped into that trade so many times.
All I need to do is wait for that to break through and then proof to hold and I get the higher probability trade. Okay, how about when a stock breaks down and we're thinking short, stocks moved up, we had a support level in here, boom, we break that support level. Do we want to short this trade here? One of the things I used to do all the time, chase the trade up, chase the trade down. No, we want to wait for that to come back up and show us a failure, right? Show us a proof that we're going to fail either at a double top, put in a head and shoulders pattern, or put in that lower high that confirms the downtrend. Then I go short. Because all these patterns that I'm drawing, guys, when we break that up downtrend, we rally through and hold the support, I can get in this, and this is typically a low risk entry trade. The high volatility has occurred over here. The high volatility occurred here. Things start to settle in when these occur. When these patterns occur, institutions have made their decision. Institutions have decided, hey, stock's too cheap, we're gonna start supporting this price again. Stock's too high, we've made our decision, we're gonna start unloading this position. It's when we settle into this pattern that we get the low risk entry trade where we can get our stop losses close in the position, okay? <clears throat> so was born the 3-8 trap. Now, I get lots of questions. We talk about patterns that we call rounded bottom breakouts and blue ice failures and and head and shoulders tops and inverted head and shoulders and all of those kind of things. <clears throat> okay. But it doesn't matter if it's a rounded bottom breakout. It doesn't matter if it's a blue ice failure. I'm still typically looking for those same two patterns. I'm looking for that price action pattern where we break a downtrend and then I'm looking for that higher low. Okay. So, enter the Dow here. The Dow breaks this trend to the downside. How many of you have been feeling the pressure, I just have to hurry up and buy something? Do you see any correct technical pattern in that chart yet? But isn't it true? Everybody out there is talking about, oh, you got to get in, you got you to do this, you got to... No, you don't. You don't have to do anything. I want to point out that the Dow at one point today was up 1,700 points in 10 days. Do you guys think the risk of a pullback is growing? And not only a pullback, but it could be a real painful pullback, right? And what if it doesn't pull back? What if we don't actually get the pullback? What's the other pattern I look for? the consolidation. If we could get some kind of resting consolidation here for a period of time, then we can establish a base that we can work from. Okay, this is that high volatility period in here where we really don't have an edge. We can't take a low risk entry trade and unfortunately our market seems to be like that right now. It's very high speculation. You see a trade start to move. Take a look at a steel company like Cleveland Cliffs. Stock stinking up the place, stinking up the place, stinking up the place, stinking up the place. Finally breaks the downtrend and just goes like a rocket. Anybody think you have an edge on that chart right now? Any edge? No. <clears throat> Alan, yes, if you are an intraday trader and don't mind trading intraday, pick your time frame and right here's your pattern, right? 
break through, pull back, high or low, enter in here, or maybe enter on that breakout in here. There's that pop out of the box pattern. Yeah. Take intraday. That's fine. It's the same patterns, right? It's the same trade. Just a different time frame. Okay, but the danger for most folks that don't intraday trade is they feel that pressure that I have to rush into this position. I have to hurry. And I'll tell you guys, when we find those good quality price action trades, we know it, we see them. And when I've taken charts and gone back in time on a trade and start clicking forward a day at a time, 99% of the people that are watching me do that can pick out the entry signal. Now, why is it we can do that when we go back on a past chart and you can't see the, the days coming ahead, but we can go back and do it. And why is it we can do that so, so accurately? Think about this, guys. <clears throat> because we're under no pressure. <clears throat> yep, that's right. <clears throat> You're not emotionally involved in it. Okay. <clears throat> and so we put this undue pressure on us. We're in such a rush to make money that we actually do our own self. How many in here would, would say I'm my own worst enemy? Yeah, most traders are. Most traders are their own worst enemy when it comes to trading because we, we, we put ourselves in bad situations all the time. Okay, take a look at a couple of charts that <clears throat> I set alerts on today. General Motors. Now, I want you to notice that the difference with me here is I'm not searching for the big white candle. That's not what I'm looking for. What did I tell you I'm looking for? I'm looking for that stock that has moved up and is pulling back and I'm looking for support and I'm looking for trend to see whether or not there's an entry signal coming. An entry signal coming, not already occurred. And the way I can do that and deal with that is I set a price alert and I literally make the trade come to me. Can you guys see on this chart, I could have a relatively low risk entry if this thing popped a buy signal in here. <clears throat> I'm holding support, right? I'm proving this price support is valid. So I wait for that trade. I force the trade to come to me. If it gaps too much, I walk away, JP, yeah. I walk away, there's too much risk, right? <clears throat> if a stock gaps up here and I still rush into it, that's kind of bad on me, right? Because now what I've done is I've just taken a trade that has that much risk in the position. What it means is I traded undisciplined. I'm not disciplined to a plan. I took too much risk in the trade. That is an undisciplined trader. It either is a trade or it isn't a trade. Okay, so I look for those low risk entry type trades. I place price alerts in areas here. Now I'm not saying Fubo is gonna be a trade. Can you guys see what I've got going on here in Fubo? <clears throat> There's that downtrend, break, and a hold of a higher low. Now, I also have a heck of a lot of price resistance in this chart, right? So I have to take that into consideration. Do I want to buy this stock right there at price resistance? I mean, how many times have we failed here? How many times does it have to fail there before I believe it's true? The difference in this chart right now is that we have broken the downtrend and we have held a higher low. So if I had a buy signal pop in here, breach that level, I might, I might, depending on what the market's like, depending on where things are, I might take risk on that trade. 
But here's the other thing I want to point out, guys. Does it matter? Does it matter if I take this trade or if I say, you know what, there's too much risk here yet, break out, prove to hold, then I'll take the trade. See, it comes down to the individual trader. You don't have to take a trade just because the market's open. Don't feel obligated to trade unless you feel like you have an edge. <clears throat> oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, Rickster, what I just kind of said is all that resistance up here. Think about this for a second. Is this going to be a lower odds trade than this one up here? Yes, absolutely. This would be a lower odds trade. Okay, when I break through and prove to hold, now I've got a better position. Okay. Yes, and you still have resistance above, but this is proof of a strong level of price support. Anytime a stock has been in a downtrend, you're going to have above price resistance. But if we start holding big levels of price support, like we did right in here, we start getting positive price action. Okay, so if we pop through and hold, hey, we're golden. We have a pretty good opportunity in a trade. Okay, let's take a look at that open. And Gwen's mentioned a couple times. Open, nice, nice chart. Breaking through, look at it consolidating. Now here's another thing that I, I see that I think a lot of people don't see. <clears throat> because we're so wanting to get this trade. How many of you have ever taken that big move, it gives us a little rest, pops this signal in here, and we buy that chart? Didn't I just describe that before? That's that gotcha trade. You jump on that position and then this thing dies on the vine or just kind of doesn't go anywhere. And why is that? Why is that happening? Have we really tested the price support yet or trend? No. We haven't pulled back to test support yet. Now that's fine. If the buyers are going to hold this up strong enough and say this is the right price, the closer and closer we get the trend, the better this chart gets. So for me, when I see a chart like this, guys, that's when I take it and put a price alert on the chart and say, show me something here. And after that point, I don't worry about this chart anymore. I let the computer bring me the trade. Yeah, it may need more time to rest because of this sharp move in price action. Boom, like a rocket. Notice how consistent this chart has been following this trend. Why should we believe this all of a sudden is going to change? Okay, so don't jump on the first move when we're really elevated away from support and trend. Okay. Um, AJ, what I typically like to see when I say consolidation for a pop out of the box, I usually want to see three to four light price action days. Okay. I want to see this, these light candles like here. I don't want to see these big swinging candles, especially away from trend and support. That doesn't impress me, I'm not interested in it. Because this makes my risk higher, this makes my risk lower. Can you guys see the possibility that this could just kinda dink around in here for another week and actually set up a very low risk entry into the trade?
Those are the kind of charts that I'm looking for. I want to see those periods where the price action becomes concise, becomes easy to read, it becomes easy to find those potential entries. Take a look at HOMB. <clears throat> big pop. Don't care. See how you can chase that big pop right at resistance? and just get stopped out. But notice if it holds this higher low in here off of this price support area, I have a lower risk entry trade. Now I'm not saying it would be a great trade because there's not a whole lot of room before the next resistance level. But can you guys see that this gives me a lower risk entry than that big white candle trade? So I want to see that price action become concise. I want to see it calming down. Let's take a look at Ford here for a second. Can I see my price alert here on Ford? See how this makes this nice move to the upside? Following the pattern, following the trade. Just like clockwork, okay? When we get too steep in our move, when we get too radical in our moves, when we don't come back and test support, we have less edge in the trade. When I get these consistent resting periods, can you see this resting period right in here, guys? Pop through resistance and then rest. That's what I wanna see. <clears throat> I don't necessarily keep in adjusting the line. Um, notice how this support level right in here corresponds with price action over here. Okay. Now let me just let me just mention this in Ford because this is important. See how steep this rally has been in this move. When you get a steep rally. At some point in time, you can expect a longer resting period. Okay, now I can't tell you if it's gonna happen now or if we're actually gonna break out first. We could break out to that new high, pull back and then spend some time resting. Okay, so if a stock breaks the trend, meaning that we have to consolidate longer in here, no problem as long as it doesn't break support because if it breaks support now I have to be looking at it for a potential short until it can recover that support and hold it does that make sense AJ um, I enter my stop-loss orders as conditional price orders JP always um, I use a conditional order because they can't see it. That's correct. If it does break, if it does break support, it has to reestablish trend. Okay. If it doesn't, there's no trade. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? If, it, if it's not going to establish trend, why would I want to be in it? If it doesn't hold support, if it breaks down through this support, when it rallies back up, I'm going to be watching it for a potential short because now I have a downtrend. Right? And the only way it can become bullish again is break that downtrend and prove to hold. Does that make sense? We make uptrends occur when we create higher lows. We make downtrends occur when we make lower highs. 
So when we break support, we run the risk of a lower high, just like right here. Notice where we broke support, we rallied back, and then we just kept sinking. No, not necessarily, and particularly in this market, LG, a breakout isn't normally immediately accompanied by a price action pullback. And the, uh, right now, it's as soon as you see a white candle, everybody just chases, right? Just run to the, just bail, just dive in. Okay, so what we're seeing right now in the market is a lot of these big erratic spiking moves. But we have to look at those and realize those create a lot of risk. Take a look at a stock like STLD, okay? When it finally decided to move in here, we broke it through, broke through resistance, we pulled back. But as, if you're not in that trade early, notice right here, if I were to put my entry into this trade right here, my stop loss needs to be under that support. How many of you are willing to take a nine and a quarter percent loss on a trade? And that's a stock trade. Option trade, 25, 30%, 35%. So if you don't see this trade early enough, for example, on this little pullback in here, if you, you could have saw this and maybe said, hey, I'm gonna place a price alert in here. If I get in here, that's an acceptable trade. If I get in here, it's not acceptable. Now at this point, I need another resting pullback to get me into that trade, right? I need that low risk entry. Does that make sense, guys? <clears throat> now on Thursday, I don't know if Ed is still here. Ed, if you're still here, could you get a link for me? I'm gonna be doing a class on the 3-8 trap. And the 3-8 trap is very, very simple. It really is just a price action setup. Okay, that's all it is. It's, it's, it's the easiest strategy that I know of to turn a trader around, to be able to visualize the trade and find good entry points. And I'm gonna be doing a class on this on Thursday. There are some spots available. So if you guys are interested, um, and if you, I don't know if anybody's around that can drop the link in here for that, if anyone has an interest in that. Um, you'd be more than welcome. And I, I've i taught hundreds of people on this and so many people just respond back very quickly about how it's turned their trading around. Okay, And anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't require you to be any kind of a trading genius. Okay, It just ha requires you to be disciplined. And I'll tell you honestly, that's one of the hardest things to be. Discipline to a set of rules. But if you can train yourself to be disciplined to a trading plan, like the 3-8 trap, there's a lot of money that can be made. Okay? A lot of money that can be made. Um, take a, a look at KMI. Some of the folks in right way options, we're st still holding this. I'm holding this as a long-term hold, so a different, different outlook on this. But there was my price alert. This is the 3.8 trap entry here. Look at the move in this that this made. And it's just waiting for that trade to occur. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low. And by the way, guys, if you go back in charts, I don't care how many times you go back in a chart, you look at downtrends, they're always gonna end the same way. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low, and then you've got the easy trade. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low, you got the easy trade. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low, you got the easy trade. Follow the trend, we get the pullbacks in that prove to hold trend, easy money. Here's one of those examples that we were just talking about. What if we have to, after we've moved up so far in this trade, we have to relax in here a long time? No problem, as long as it doesn't break support. Okay? 
As long as it doesn't break support, it doesn't matter. I don't care if it goes clear over here. It doesn't matter as long as it holds support. I can place a price alert above this and catch this entry and then continue to follow that same pattern. It just required more rest because of the big move up. Okay. Someone could type in for LG to please reboot. <clears throat> Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you, Fred. Fred just posted the link for the 3.8 trap class. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate that. I don't, JP. Um, volume nowadays means almost nothing to me. And why is that? Um, you've heard of dark pools, right, JP? Okay. About two-thirds of the volume of the market two-thirds of the volume of the market is hidden from us in the dark pool. So on an intraday basis, when we're looking for this, volume's not going to help us because they're hiding it. We can't see it. We won't see it until the end of the day. So when I'm making price decisions on price, it's going to be based on the pattern and based on the price. One of the things <clears throat> that I say, and I think right way options folks probably get tired of hearing it, but I remind people of the same thing over and over that price is king. Price is king. I don't care what indicator is on the chart. Price is more important than the indicator. What is price doing? Is it holding support? Is it holding trend? Is it proving buyer stepping in? Is it holding resistance? Do you see sellers coming in? <clears throat> Most of the dark pool activity is consolidated to the market by the end of the day, in the last 10 minutes of the day. Okay, so if you look at the Dow, let's go to a 10 minute chart notice at the end of every single day there's a giant spike in volume that's dark pool activity being consolidated to the market in the last 10 minutes of the day okay so we can't see what they're doing all day long It's right there at the end of the day that it gets consolidated. Now, I should also mention that it's not just 100% dark pool activity. Let's say uh, one of our friends here from India makes a trade in the U.S. market. <clears throat> okay, their, their brokerage firms and over, everything over there have a 24-hour <clears throat> requirement to report the volume to the market. So there could be foreign trading going on that doesn't get seen by our market for 24 hours. Okay. Price is everything for me. Price, and honestly, volume means almost nothing to me anymore. Because you can't, you can't do anything with it. Until, you know, if you were looking, if you're a, a weekly trader and you trade on a, on a long-term basis, volume can be pretty stable and work for you. Okay? Because at the end of the day, it's consolidated. There's enough evidence of it. You can see it. Okay? On a daily basis, you really can't. Okay. It's one of those areas where institutions have tremendous advantage over us. And rather than complain about it, the only thing we can do, okay, the only thing we can do is to work with it. You know, it's a very common thing to, to hear stuff like that and, and just get angry and say, they gum institutions, they get all of it, and yeah, I'd make money if it wasn't for the institutions. No, we have to figure out as retail traders how to work with that. Yeah, it stinks. If I were the head of the SEC, that would end tomorrow. 
is we don't have a fair market. Okay? It's slanted to their favor. I would end that tomorrow. But you know what? Nobody called me. And I don't think I'm going to get that call either. Um, yeah, the institutions, the big guys, trade in dark pools. Okay? Um, several of the, you know, the big bank institutions have what they call the dark pool. And what it is is institutions get together. Now, they're not actually physically sitting in the same room. But they get together and they swap stock back and forth and trade amongst themselves. We don't get to see that until the end of the day. Okay, it's just the institutions, big traders, big, big traders. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, if you if you can buy yourself a seat into these, yeah, I'm sure. You got enough money that you can toss around. Yep. They'd be happy to they'd be happy to work with it. <laughs> you know, the, the way an institution thinks. Let's be really clear about this. All of us in the market, all of us, the way the institution thinks is how do I get that money? They're not here for our better betterment. They're not here for any of that. They like to give you lip service to that fact, but they're here to take your money. That's what they want to do. That's how they get paid. So we can either choose to fight that, which we will lose, or we can work with it. Okay? We can work with it by letting the market or the stock show us, the institution show us where they want to go with the stock and then we follow it. We can look for those stocks that have moved up substantially. Take a stock like, like FCX. FCX, big spiking move. Held support. Do you guys see a potential setup here? It popped yesterday, pulled back a little bit. It may need a little bit more rest. Okay, this was a big spiking move. Okay, may need a little bit more rest and we're dealing with some more price resistance in the chart. But this would be the kind of chart I'd want to be keeping an eye on. See, if we let the institutions make the decisions, that's what they're good at doing. They've got the big money. They can decide what stocks are going to support, what stocks they're not going to support. Once they show us where they're going, we can follow and make lots of money just riding along on their coattails. Okay, and our advantage over them that they hate, they hate it, is that we are much faster and much more nimble than they can be. Okay. <clears throat> LMT. Um, was it? A, it was earnings. Looks like. Was an earnings event. Um, so I'm guessing they stubbed their toe big time. So what do you do with something like that? Wait for the next pattern. You can't chase this short, and there's no way this is a long. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you go back here, when we broke this trend, we never had a test of support, not once. Consequently, big moves like this can occur. We never had proof of support. And unfortunately, that's what this market is giving us a lot of. It's either we're running for the door big stretched out moves, or we're chasing in as hard and fast as we can. But it's when we get moves like this over here, 
where we can make really good money. We can just follow that pattern. This here was just tremendous risk. Okay. Well, let's took it to take a look at that. For a long-term hold, let's go to a weekly. Now, let me ask you, LG. Are you sure? Why would you add to that when it failed at downtrend on the longer term? Are you so confident that this just has to be bullish that you're willing to risk it all and just hold? Well, I don't care if it pays dividends. How long can a stock go down? All you have to do is wait. Okay, if this is gonna hold this price support, and it very well may hold this price support, all you have to do is wait. You don't have to take the high risk that this could just keep doing this. Would anybody be surprised if it fell through there like that? Bounce back up here and then continue to fall? So why take the risk on it here? Just because we want to be stubborn and say, hey, it pays dividends and all that kind of thing, institutions right now are telling us they're not supporting this stock, and I don't know why. Okay, but there's a problem here. How will we know on a weekly basis if that has changed? Pretty simple. Break out and hold and then show me buyers. Yeah, and, 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 and believe me guys, I take long-term trades like that. The same pattern is true. Notice here on this weekly chart, long-term, let the downtrend break. Show me the higher low. This is the easy money. Okay. Yeah, AJ is right on AMD. You guys see my price alert right there? Had a price alert up here waiting to see if it would pop through. Never, never happened. So don't care. I don't care. It was came, came out here to trend. I was waiting to see if it would go. Nope, didn't go. Don't care. Here makes the higher low, breaks the downtrend, proves easy trade. If you go back and watch my morning prep videos, I talked about this over and over and over. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine, LG. You know, just make sure that it, it gives you some kind of proof that it'll hold support. Something that'll hold support. Um, let me give an example here. Um, I, I'm, I'm preaching because this is what I do. Okay. Break that downtrend. There's my entry into Walmart. I didn't have to catch the perfect entry to be up 80 grand. Didn't have to. I didn't have to be the superhero trying to buy it on the way down. Let it prove and then buy it. It's way easier. It's much more fun looking at your account with green in it than a whole bunch of red waiting for things to turn back around. Okay. I'm holding um, UNG right now. I've made so much money on UNG, it's almost embarrassing. I did the same thing. 
right in here. I got long UNG. I didn't have to do anything fancy here. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low. And there's the money. Institutions were showing me selling until that point in time. There's the money. They're showing me what they want to do. Now it's my job to follow it. And by the way, guys, this is nothing more than a weekly create trap entry. Does that make sense? See, we can let them play their games. We can let them drive stocks up and down. We can let them just go ahead and do that stuff. And if we're patient and wait, we can take advantage of them because they show us where they want to go if we allow them to do that. Okay, just give them time, they'll show us. Okay. All right, so did any of this make some sense to you guys tonight? And by the way, let's talk about, just really quickly, stocks, let me talk about, Rick likes, um, um, he, he's got this pattern, it's just an absolutely f awesome pattern that um, I trade and trade and trade, have traded for a long time. Um, and that's the round of bottom breakout. Let me show you in here. I'm going to remove price here for a second. These are standard moving averages. The blue one is a 50 day. That's the 200 day. The round of bottom breakout is when the 200 is well above the 50 day moving average. The stock has been sold off and sold off and sold off. But now notice what's happening here in the moving average. That 50 day moving average has turned. Notice our short term averages are crossing up through the 50 and price, the breakout part. This is the rounding part, the rounded bottom, the breakout price pushes above, proves to hold up here. And then the natural target is the 200 day moving average. Okay, but I want you to see that when we do that guys, that also produces the same pattern. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low, there's the trade. Isn't that cool? See, if we're patient, it all comes together. All of these patterns mean something, and if we let price tell us, we can trade the same pattern, the 3-8 trap, within a rounded bottom breakout. We can trade the 3A pattern within a blue ice failure. We can trade the 3A pattern within a head and shoulders top or a head and shoulders bottom, inverted pattern. It's the same pattern and it doesn't matter the time frame that you trade it. It doesn't matter if it's a weekly. I showed you that WMT trade in my entry right back here. Let me zoom that up. That's a 3-8 trap entry. That's all it is. I do the same thing over and over. I've done the same thing over and over, trading basically two patterns in the market for my entire career. Well, after I finally got my head out of my hind end and stopped banging my head against the wall, then I started <laughs> following a discipline, trading just two patterns and making money. Okay, if we focus in correctly on charts and stop trying to be the smartest person in the room and outsmart the institutions and do all of that kind of stuff, if we just let price show us the way Think about it. Institutions have to show us a way. There's no other way that they can make a stock move up or trend. They have to show us the way. 
They control about 82% of the money in the market. They have to show us the way. They don't have a choice. And if we just let them do it, let them do their job and we do our job, let's just tag along and make money. We can do this thing over and over and over, okay? And it doesn't require you to be any kind of a superhero. You don't have to have tons and tons of fancy scans. A few simple scans can do this. You don't have to be wringing your hands all the time with great big losses in your account and, and just trying to argue with the market all the time. It makes your trading much more enjoyable. Sure, you're going to have losses. There's no, there's no pattern. There's nothing out there that guarantees you to win all the time. But I'm telling you, if you learn how to do this, you'll win at a much higher rate. And isn't that what we all want? Don't we all want consistency in our trading? Just give me some consistency. Okay, give me some consistency. So I'll take a look at play and PM, PM and then we'll call it a day. Um, play, there's nothing here yet. Um, David Busters is gonna report on 12.9. Let's see, yeah, there's, there's nothing here yet. So we've got tons and tons of price resistance here. Okay, so what I would have to have happen in here is we're going to have to prove that we can get out. There's just too much data that says this level up here is important. So if we can pop through that level and hold, awesome. Now I'm interested. But until that occurs, I'm just not interested. Okay. It's not to be mean. It's just there's nothing there. Um, Philip Morris. Philip Morris is a short. Why do I say that? Just like I said before, stock breaks the trend, breaks support, price support. Now I have to start looking at it as a short. Until it can cross back above support and hold, I have to be looking at this as short. Okay. Break support, cardinal sin. Break trend, added to the cardinal sin. Got no use for it until it can recover. If it can recover and hold the higher low, now I'm interested again. Does that make sense, Mish? Misha? Misha? How you pronounce your name, but... Okay. Apple, uh, I'll just give you my opinion really without even looking at it. Apple's going to report on Thursday. You have no edge in Apple. How can you have an edge on a coin flip? It really doesn't even matter what the pattern is. If I'm holding this trade, I'm closing it, heading into earnings. That's all there is to it. There, you have no edge on Apple. Okay. After you get through earnings, if it gives me a pattern, now you've got something you can work with. Okay. Yeah, I use a different watch list, Ricky. Um, I use a watch list that um, has been screened for me. Um, it's what I call my optionable watch list. I, I make sure that they're stocks that have good quality options. They have good volume in them. Um, 
I throw out stocks that have really high plot price volatility where I don't have much edge. You know, stuff like um, stuff like biotechs and things like that that can move in great big herky jerky patterns. Okay. Uh, JP, I, I would, you know, it's kind of funny because Rick used to only be a stock trader. Um, I taught him. Uh, he came to me. I taught him how to to do um, directional long calls and long puts. Now he's he's just that's what he does. He's a long call, long put trader. That's all he does, and he's very successful at it. But rarely does he buy a stock, or if ever does he buy a stock anymore. You're gonna find me as an option trader. I'm buying more stock than he does. Okay, so you know everybody's different. Rick's Rick's strategy is awesome. He does a great job with what he does. He makes tons of money doing it. Um, I, I do I do a little bit more. I hold long-term trades. Okay. Um, I, I do, you know, um, well, I do other things. Um, I, I do credit spreads. I do, um, you know, all different things so we are different in, in that respect I um, I look for what I think is the best setup not just one strategy but there's nothing wrong with that you never have to know all the all of the different strategies that you never have to Rick's proof of that if that fits you the best keep doing it yeah I love I love owning stock and selling calls Richard on long-term trades I, I mean, honestly, guys, um, no joke. This Walmart trade, I've got 80 grand in profits in it. I, I don't know. You tell me. It's not that hard. So guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic evening. I had a pretty please for J and J. Let's take a look at J and J. J and J coming up. Uh, notice we have a inverted head and shoulders pattern here in J and J. There's our inverted head and shoulders pattern. Here's our higher low. Okay. So we broke the downtrend in this chart. Here, let's get let's go to a naked chart. We broke the downtrend in this chart and we've made that higher low in here. Okay. So now today it moved up 1.14% and it's approaching a very significant price resistance level. Look how many times we've hit this and failed. So now your question is, okay, if do I take the risk on this trade here that it's going to pop on through? It's a relatively low risk entry trade percentage wise okay I could take that position but what if it hits here and then fails so you have to make you have to roll the dice on that okay is this worth trading if it stops you out here or would you rather wait for it to break out here and hold and then have that big support area working for you as well as the trend that's your that's the the situation you got to work with. All right. Hope that makes some sense. Hey, you guys are welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Um I truly appreciate it. Um if anybody has that link again for the for the class, if you'd post it one more time in case anybody's interested. You know, and I'm going to ask you guys for one favor and one favor only. If you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, I'm going to ask you to go over there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're getting close to 25,000 subscribers. Okay. Um, and, you know, whatever. You may say, yeah, so what? I don't care. And, and that's cool. You, you don't have to care. 
But if you want to stay in touch with us and get this kind of information, and, and I put out a morning video every day where I'm giving out stock ideas that follow these same kind of plans and things that I do, okay? Go over there to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, stay involved with this, okay? Because if we can help you to be a better trader, that's my goal of doing it. Um, I love trading. I love doing what I do. But I'll tell you honestly, guys, at some point in time, I just repeat the same thing over and over and over in the market. The real pleasure in my life is helping other people become successful in trading. That's, that's what gets me up every morning. Okay. Now I do the morning prep every day. JP. I'll be back at my desk at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Putting the morning market prep every single market day, I put out a morning market prep video. Okay. The only time it doesn't happen is on a rare occasion when I take some time off or when I have an internet problem or a computer problem that prevents me from getting it done. All right. Thank you guys. I want to wish you all a fantastic evening. Get some rest. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning for all you folks in HRC and RWO. Thanks so much for being here. Um, thanks so much for going over there and subscribing to the YouTube channel. I really truly appreciate it. Y'all take care. Be safe. Wish you all the kind all kinds of success in your trading. Talk to you soon, everyone.